Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and explore the request and response objects a little bit more because I don't think we have done um, enough research on them yet. So because we are using TypeScript, we can get all the benefits of autocomplete right at our disposal. So if I try to write request dot, you're gonna see we have a bunch of methods and properties enabled for us. But some of the interesting properties, let's just go over through them. So the first thing is request.body, obviously, because, you know, if you are trying to, let's just say if I console log request.body right here, and let's say request body is something like this. So if you open this and if we go ahead and if I try to copy this API, and let me just go ahead and fetch this real quick with a method of post and body of, you know, hello something like that right and hit enter so you can see right here i received on my node end the request body hello now this is actually beneficial in the case that i'm sending json data as the body so we'll have more tutorials on that in terms of authentication and everything but i'm just giving you an idea here stringify and i have you know something as username is admin and password is admin right and if i just do one more thing that is just just setting up the headers as well so that oops so that we have the content type content type as application json because that's what we want to receive at the back end and hit enter what we're going to see is that at the back end instead of getting a string which is what we are sending inside the body we actually get a parsed down object from um, the actual request.body so i can literally just go ahead and say request.body.username and if i perform the same request one more time it's going to give me admin just like that which was the username so this is the request.body thing we have a little bit of other things as well. So you have, let's see, request.cookies, which might be important when we are dealing with cookies. So we'll, we'll just take a look at that. Request.headers is also interesting if you are trying to get custom headers out of a particular request. Then let's see what we have. Request.query is also interesting. So if we have just like there, and if I try to do Q is equal to one here, what we're going to see is in our request query, this should be query, actually, obviously. So our query is q equal to 1, and it is automatically parsed as an object for you. So you don't have to really parse it yourself, right? Then there are, um, for the most part, this is what you're going to use. Request.url is something you can use as well. But for the most part, that's not, uh, that's all you're going to make use of, right? So this is how the request object looks like. Let's just take a look at response object now real quick. So response, we obviously have seen the JSON part with this thing. So it allows you to send JSON responses, but we have a lot of interesting things apart from that as well. Let's just start that. So we have, let's see, we have uh, JSON, obviously. We have rest.send in case you want to send, um, you know, any other data which is not json right so if you want to send something like this instead of you know just json response you can use this so rest.send is going to take care of that again it's an abstraction over all the real methods which we have but for the most part it just works so we get three or four because we have already loaded this page once but you know it's going to take care of all all the things then let's just keep on moving um we have rest.set header which is also also interesting so we can have you know x custom header and uh, i don't know we are open to hire people something like that just to add a little bit of interest to your application and for the most part we can just use this refresh and if you take a look inside your response headers now you can see that you have a custom header now we are open to hire people right pretty cool you can also use the set header to actually set cookie 
so set cookie could also be something like that and we can say are you programmer equal to true right and if i go ahead and refresh this now you can see that it sets a cookie and now if i go ahead and take a look at document.cookie we actually get are you a programmer as true as a cookie which is set by the inside the browser useful for authentication again all right let's just keep on moving let's see what else we got so we have obviously the status code with us so if you want to set status code at 404 and uh, response you can do that so you can see inside networks now we get a 404 as the status code of our document you can basically do any status code you like obviously just make sure you're playing inside the rest status code so you can do 4013 i don't know if you can do some ridiculous status codes yeah apparently you can <laughs> but don't really go ahead and try those can we do 1337 no not really well you can do uh i'm a teapot i don't remember its status code it was somewhere around 104 or something yeah no not really anyway i don't really want to blow this up so i'm just gonna keep it as status code 200 which is 200 okay everyone knows that right so this is again one interesting property which you can set let's see what else is interesting here um there's also a method which i remember which is rest.end right so rest.end can be used to just you know it's pretty much like just just status rest.send but rest.end is more explicit that you are actually closing the response stream now hello how are you so if you do that and if you try to send more content down the line what's going to happen is that you're going to get an error from the server that cannot send set header well you get this error but the actual idea is that you cannot really send any headers or body because the response stream has been ended so anyway that's pretty much it for um how we're gonna interact a little bit with rest and request and response there's a lot more we can do when we introduce middlewares and cookies and stuff like that which would be very useful in authentication and stuff but for the most part this is how you can get started with the api's endpoint so that's all for this video i'm gonna see you pretty soon in the next one